So today I'm here on this beautiful farm taking full advantage of this glorious winter sunshine to learn a little bit more about beef and lamb farming. So you hear a lot in the media about red meat but I wanted to find out its actual environmental impact and what the British standards are like here in the UK. So I'm going to be talking to Richard who is a livestock farmer and he's going to be telling me all about his daily life as a farmer and the standards that he works to. Richard, thank you so much for having us on the farm today. It is amazing to come and actually see how beef and lamb is produced and where it comes from because there's such a big difference between what we see on the supermarket shelves to actually finding out where it comes from and how it's looked after and everything else. So how long have you been a farmer? So I've been on the farm fully for 10 years. That's after I finished university. Went traveling for a year and saw other farming systems throughout the world worked on a few neighbouring farms and I came back here to work on the family farm with my dad and uncle. So once we've been around and checked that everything is healthy and well, we then crack on with making sure everything has got clean bedding, so everything is comfortable and they've all got good food in front of them and everything is nice and clean. And then it's all the other jobs, so it might be fencing, it might be checking the crops, it might be checking around the grass field, see how the grass is growing. It just really changed with the seasons. Every season has different jobs to do. As a consumer, we assume that as a farmer, your job is actually just looking after the cattle, but it's not the whole farm, all the land and everything is a huge job to maintain and look after, isn't it? Like the whole ecosystem runs off this farm. So as well as all the livestock and sheep, you know, we've got all the, the deer and the hares and the foxes and all the wildlife that kind of rely on this farm. So it's up to us to keep the place in good shape and just manage the countryside as well as managing our animals and crops. And you were saying earlier when we were out with the sheep about the field and that how you left one of the fields for the summer because there was so much wildlife in it. Yeah, so every decision is intertwined. So the health of the animals come first, and then it's kind of the long-term wider effects on the farm. And then we also have to consider our environmental impact, be that the carbon we're producing or also the habitat that we're producing as well. So whether that be a grassland, which is really good for the wildlife, as in the butterflies and the insects and the pollinators, or a hedgerow when we cut the hedges to allow the nesting season to be uh, as productive as possible because we want the wildlife to thrive on this farm as well as our livestock. We did a massive farm audit of our carbon last year and then we can work out from there where our most carbon efficient areas are and where we need to improve. So from that we can analyse and we can work out what we can do. For instance, we're now reducing the fertiliser on our grassland, try and make ourselves more environmentally sensitive and produce beef with a much lower carbon footprint. So in terms of animal welfare, what do you look for when you're taking care of the cattle? What are the healthy signs that they should have? So the more you work with livestock, the more you get to know them. And the key is you can tell when they're not themselves. And that's when right. they're under the weather. So basically by spending time getting in here and bedding them down, you can generally just pick up these small little things that they are not quite right. And then from there, you can analyse what the issues are and make it right for them. And we work very closely with our vets, which is one of the Red Tractor standards, and that helps us analyse what our issues are and improve year on year. So what do they eat in terms of food? What do they have? So most of the year they're outside in the grass and they're eating purely the grass that they are grazing. They're finding which bits they like, finding which bits they don't, and that's what they eat all summer long. But when we bring them inside for the winter, because the grass gets too wet and the soil gets really muddy. That's when we put them onto silage. So this is all grass grown on the farm in the spring and then we wrap it up and we store it so that it can pickle and preserve its goodness for them to eat during the winter. And that's interesting that you say that they come in for the winter so they don't stay out all year round. So we leave them out for as long as physically possible because it's a lot less work for us to go and check on them in the field than actually bring them in, bed them down, bring the food to them. It's a big expense and task for us because they, they weigh up to a ton and on those four legs pushing down the soil they can turn, soon turn a nice grass field into a muddy mess just like the end of a festival and we can't have our pasture turning into that. No. For one fact that's an environmental nightmare because all that mud can run off into the streams along with the cow poo 
but also that pasture is never going to be as good again. So we've got to take into consideration the health of the animals being out in the winter, but also the health of our pasture and the effect that's going to have on the environment. So you mentioned earlier that after university you went travelling and actually you looked at other farms around the world then. How do you think our standards kind of compare and what does it mean to you being a red tractor farmer? So standards vary hugely throughout the world and what is commonplace in other countries is actually illegal here. So just by looking for the red tractor you can see that it was produced to British standards and it is British food. Thank you so much for having us on the farm and answering all of my many, many questions. It's been so interesting. I've really, really enjoyed it. Well, thanks for coming. It's been great having you on farm and just showing you what we do. We're really proud of this. So it's really easy to rely on news headlines and social media to form our opinions on food and farming here in the UK. But actually it's been really interesting talking to Richard to see the pride and care and attention that goes in to raising these animals. And that actually then as a shopper all we have to do is look out for that red tractor.